All right, we're live with Jennifer Sharp. She is the director of Anecdotals, a movie that uh, documents vaccine injured people, uh, specifically the COVID vaccine. Not all all vaccines, right, Jen? You guys just focused on the COVID vaccine. Yes. Um, one of the most uh, most um, I don't know, even know. <laughs> it feels like every word to describe how divisive it's been it kind of underestimates really how how divisive that. Um, shot has been how many people have suffered severe consequences not not just um you know you guys talk about the physical uh, side of things but there are also like stories of the uh professional losses um and and even just questioning them losing friends and family members and just like the you know the the, the cost and i think a, a lot of it i want to talk to you about um relates to media coverage and just the narrative around it that we were constantly listening to day after day after day that um, people like Don Lemon, for instance, and uh, folks over at CNN were perpetuating. So let me play this quick clip. This is from Anecdotals, the movie that, again, you directed. You can find it on YouTube, which we're going to talk about how it even still exists on YouTube. But uh, let's just watch this quick clip real fast. The people who are not getting vaccines, who are believing the lies on the Internet instead of science, it's time to start shaming them. What else? Or leave them behind one word describes okay so I'm it's time to start shaming them or leave them behind tell me why you decided to include that clip at the very beginning of the documentary because um that was a huge part of how we all felt as vaccine injured we've been left behind and it was extra powerful when someone like don lemon because you know is out there saying leave them behind or the, the mainstream media is saying you don't deserve to be here you don't belong and so that's a huge impetus for kind of why i even made the movie it's like a lot of the hurt when I saw more and more mainstream media saying things like Howard Stern and like, I just throw all it. Cause that's what was, I was being bombarded with left and right. And I'm like, Hey, but what about all of us? I mean, I don't even care that I'm vaccine injured so that I can't take the shot. I mean, I think you have the right to not take it regardless. So I'll make that distinction. But for those of us who are vaccine injured and can't take it, you know, it's like we're being talked down to too. And it was ridiculous. And when I saw Don Lemon, I was so disappointed in that. And I wasn't huge into the mainstream media, but I lean left media and left news and when i started seeing like the left wing news sources just being so angry and violent like the, i was just like this is this is powerful so i started with that was that part of the reason that you decided to do the documentary or was it also because uh you yourself suffered an injury no it was actually so i suffered an injury but it was everybody's reaction to my injury and then i couldn't talk about it with friends mm -hmm. and family like like you said like and i would the best my friends and family would do the best for the most part there were a few people who who listened and talked but what the best they would do was just listen quietly and they wouldn't respond um and then I, i'd feel like i was ranting because 10 minutes into it i'd be like okay i'm done we can change the subject and they'd be like okay and then we'd move on but like never would they like stop and say, tell me more. And the mandates came and like they'd invite me places. And I'm like, I'm not allowed to go anywhere. I'm not vaccinated. I only got one shot because um, I couldn't get another one. So I was really, you know, when people didn't really care that I wasn't allowed to participate in society. And so that was the stuff that fueled me as a filmmaker to tell the story is I was like, people aren't listening. So I'm going to use my voice as a filmmaker and say exactly what I want to say to the people who won't listen. And that was my inspiration. There, uh, show a little bit with the volume off while we're talking. Um, there, I think this guy's an orthopedic surgeon, right? Yes. My, yes. my dad's oh. an orthopedic surgeon. And, uh, yeah, it, it just made me think, cause I used to go to the operating room with him a lot as a kid. And I was thinking about this guy telling his story about how he's not safe to operate now and think, you know, thinking of, of like just how, uh, just devastating that is like one lady said she had to refinance her house. Yeah. I mean, these are, it's not, you know, and, and a lot of the messaging I think we were getting about this at the beginning too, and even still was like, well, okay, it's a couple days, just a couple days and, and, um, you know, we'll treat it. And it, and it would be worse anyway, if you got COVID. So, um, just do it. And I, I think, I don't know, I, from a, from a media perspective, as somebody who used to be in television news, I just, th this whole idea that you would just say anything it seemed very weird that like for, for the first time I had ever been hearing something being called safe and effective for like everybody, whoops, for everybody all the time. Like I couldn't think of another thing that we had just pushed like that, that it's just safe and effective for everybody all the time. What, what have we ever said that about? I just, I don't, I don't know. It just seemed very right. odd to me anyway. 
Yeah, no, me too. And that was why I start with this whole montage of kind of safe and effective. I have Biden, I have Trump secretary, I have, you know, stuff because it was like, to me, it just, you don't have to say safe and effective. Like that was my first hint. Cause I'm like, we don't know because it's new. There could be side effects. So you can't be sure it's safe. Um, you can maybe be sure it's effective if you did the trials right or whatever, like, but to call it safe was like, you don't have to call it safe. You could say, just say it's effective <laughs> and then be like, there, there will be few reactions, but those are rare or something. But like, they hardly even said that. And then meanwhile, I'm joining a support group with thousands of us who've been vaccine injured. So I'm like, it's not safe if there are people who have lost their houses, lost their jobs. Well, I interviewed somebody who was homeless because she couldn't work anymore. She was tremoring too bad. She lost her job. She eventually lost her house. She was living in a trailer in her friend's backyard. And she had owned a, um, a brownstone or a condo. So I'm just like, this is not safe and it's not cool. Well, yeah. you know, even still, like, let's just say, let's say we're talking about, um, I mean, I'm just trying to think of something out there that you could say, uh, like, uh, water. I mean, you can drink too much water, even like you could never yeah. say, you know what I mean? Like, it's and there's just, pollution like, in the know. water and there's plastic in the water bottles. And <laughs> yeah, but, but like a, for a medical treatment, like a straight up medical treatment, I, I'm, I'm just shocked that the, that the journalists were manipulated to such a degree that they would call a medical treatment for every single person safe. And like, they would say it's safe and effective for every single person when like, you don't have to know anything about medicine. You don't even have to read the the stuff that you have in this documentary, watch the stuff in the doc documentary, like read the stuff that Peter Doshi, for instance, um, you know, New England Medical Journal was talking about when it comes to the questioning or no, he's British, which, which medical yeah. journal? I always get Peter Yeah, Yeah, uh, BMJ, yeah. BMJ, British, right. Yeah. British medical journal. So, so, um, so yeah, I, I, I don't even think you need to like be down that rabbit hole, which has been completely censored to understand that. I mean, even if you're totally on board, n nobody really that's like being honest would say any medical treatment is safe and effective for every single person. So that was always yeah. the first, like, that was always just the first warning sign, I think for me that, that, that messaging and it, and it continues to be pushed, which is even weirder because now you're seeing like the CDC, for instance, say, well, we're going to, you know, we're going to consider these two groups vaccinated, and unvaccinated as basically the same when it comes to prevention. Um, and yet, OK, so why are we still pushing? Why are we still pushing this? Why do we still have mandates? Like there, there's still government agencies in Washington state that they probably make this permanent. Um so they just keep saying it. And as, I don't know, it's just very yeah. weird. Well, and there's still colleges. There's still colleges yeah. that are mandating it to go to school, like for kids who are the age, the least likely to need it. And yeah. And they're saying it's safe. And it's like, do you realize what's happening? Like, how are we still so blind? Like, that's what's so, that's what's so hard is like, there are things happening and it is clear that not, like you said, for everyone, maybe for certain people, it's, it's great. And it's the benefit outweighs the risk. But for like younger and college age kids, uh, if you're pretty healthy, it doesn't seem to. So it's, and they're still mandating it today. It's really great. It's really wild. And like you as a journalist too, I could see like seeing the world like upside down. And when you're talking about like seeing journalists report on things that must have been, you must have gone through the same craziness I went through where I'm just like seeing my world, like not see things in this way, but like you guys are journalists and you're supposed to like cover the stories more neutrally and be open. And it was complete propaganda. Oh, 100%. Yeah, it was, it was sickening to see, like my old company have partnerships with, um, with uh, clinics where, you know, they're doing like live shots, as people are rolling up to get their vaccine and come on and get your vaccine and like doing campaigns like paid campaigns for it and talking to one of my coworkers about, uh, you know, particular government agency and like the effect it was going to have on that agency because of the amount of people who were losing their jobs over the mandate, my coworker, well, he wasn't at the time, he was just my peer because I quit already, but, um, you know, former coworker, but he said he had no sympathy for people who did not get the vaccine. And so it was thereby not a story. And I think for a lot of the journalists in the media, well, typically I think they, they have a lot of their news gathering choices, editorial choices really come down to what affects them, you know? So if they huh. feel like it's not going to affect them, then it's not a story. And so if they don't, they're telling you they don't have any empathy. What they're basically saying is like, this doesn't affect me. 
You know, I don't care. Uh -huh. I, I don't have any curiosity about these people. And so it's not a story. And, and I think that was the truth for a lot of them. And I think exposed in a lot of ways for, I mean, maybe for those who are already paying attention to that. So maybe for them, not so much, but how, um, how aligned uh, the media is with the government and how, how easily baited into propaganda uh, if it com if it if it confirms their their pre existing bias, just how easily they're baited into it and and just go into it with blinders on. It, it was it was um yeah it was sickening. And I mean I yeah. sit here and I wonder was it always like this? And I just right. didn't see it because I was asleep. Or or is it worse or both? You know I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I think the same thing. Like that's one of the things I talk about in the movie is just kind of like my whole journey as a human being, right? So it's like everything changed and now I question everything, like the things I, I fought about. So here's something that's very interesting. At the, at the beginning, I was never super like my, like I have friends who never got vaccinated and I never judged them. So I was never somebody who was like, get the vaccine. It wasn't because I was injured that I'm suddenly understanding things. Like, I mean, I knew there was a risk. I made a choice. It was my choice. Right. So, you know, I was really, I was okay. So I had a friend who was not vaccinated and who's anti-vax like for every vaccine. And um, we talked through this. And before I got vaccinated, I actually talked to her because I wanted to know what she thought, like, because I wasn't seeing anything bad on the media I was watching. I saw nothing harmful. And I was like, can you please show me a little bit? So we had a talk. She gave me great stuff. I was really not sure, but I went ahead and did it. And we would have these conversations. And at one point she sent me, and I don't remember the timing of this, but when Governor Newsom, I live in California, when he was being recalled, she sent me this text and I woke up in the morning and I was so immersed in my vaccine injury and being ignored. And I'm very touchy on the subject. And like the last thing I wanted was to be woken up in the morning with like one of her rants. I mean, not a rant, like she, it's great. Like we rant to each other. Right. But it was just, it was that morning and I woke up and I was like, I had gotten in a fight with my, with my brother the day before because of vaccine stuff. And then she pops up and she's like, this guy looks really good to vote for. And it's this Republican you know, like, cause it's about the Newsom recall mm -hmm. and I, it was just kind of like hit me. And I was just like, I kind of flipped a little and was like, don't tell me, like, don't wake me up in the morning and tell me to vote for a Republican. Like, I understand that Newsom is horrible, <laughs> however, I, and I'm literally like, you know, and this is, this is where I was and I'm telling you guys this, it's, it's like truthful stuff, but like, I was like, as a black woman, as the things that I believe in, I'm not a single issue voter. I can't, it's too much for me. Like I can't just suddenly, you know, say, oh, let's bring the Republicans in because they don't stand for a lot of the things that help me on other levels. And <clears throat> we ended up having a text fight and it got ugly. And then I was like, well, there's another friend I lost. And then we ended up apologizing and talking about it like a couple days later because we both talk. But the crazy thing is that's how I was with the Newsom recall. A year later, right, we, we or some or whenever it was, we just had new government elections. And um, so I'm forced to vote for Newsom again on the on the new government election. And I couldn't do it. Like, I couldn't vote for him. Like, so like I came that full circle that like I got so mad at somebody for telling me to not vote for him to everything I had learned and questioning everything. And I'm like, how can I vote for this man? He has been horrible with COVID stuff. He just signed into law the bill that doctors are not allowed to speak to their patients about COVID misinformation. And it's very vague. So it's basically right. threatening all the doctors in California. Yeah, terrible. yeah, so knowing the things he's done and the way he's been such a hypocrite, like I couldn't. And I just think it's an interesting story. It's a little, you know, because it just shows like that's the journey and that's the journey yeah. of like this movie and the, uh, and my journey of like, what, what else did I believe in? What else did I think? Yeah. It, w it was crazy because well, prior to COVID um, you know, I, I didn't even question, I didn't question any of this stuff really uh, maybe a little bit here and there. I, 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 I was starting to get really into like local food and stuff. So I was starting to wake my, myself up to, medicine i think because when you get into mm -hmm. how how upside down the food industry is and you start looking into okay why are, why people are really unhealthy and then you're like wait a second where was the uh american heart association on this one you know and where does their funding right. come from and you know then it starts down that rabbit hole but uh but in washington state this was still when i was a reporter and i was covering the environment so i wasn't covering medicine really you know at all um at that point but we were having this statewide debate over 
school mandates for vaccines. So this is prior to COVID and this is all, you know, the vaccines that people are normally hearing about um, before this was, you know, taking the lead on the conversation. And so they wanted to, uh, the legislature wanted to take away, I should say that there were proponents and, um, you know, a lot of them that wanted to take away a certain exemption, like I think philosophical religious exemption for your kids to go to school without these vaccines. And uh, so there was this debate happening. And so what we normally would do, we would like just have the the mom at the protest saying why she should still be able to use this exemption. And then we would have the Department of Health saying why she's an idiot. Right. Basically, that was the way we covered these this topic. And so there was a conference of doctors coming to town and, you know, they were going to discuss in part why this exemption should exist. And they, and they were doctors who had concerns over forcing kids to get vaccines. Um, and, uh, I didn't know anything about this. I didn't know how controversial this topic was. I didn't know. I just had no clue what kind of firestorm I was stepping myself into. I got an email about the conference and just passed it along to our assignment desk and, and my manager and said, Hey, maybe this would be a better way to cover this topic with actual doctors. And I, I would like to ask you that question too. Like, what do you think about how it often gets put up like the, the, it's it's just like this you know joe citizen talking about an injury and then this you know a government official saying they're you know they're wrong or they're it's they're dumb or or whatever it's like i'm the doctor listen to me you know and it's just these anecdotes i mean it kind of brings up to your point the name of your documentary it's just like well it's just an anecdote you know and that's how we covered it too anecdotes were the ones that were questioning it and then authority was the one that was defending it. And I, I always just found that to be a really problematic dichotomy. So when you fast forward, I passed this email along, hey, this conference is coming to town. Which, should we cover this? Because we never talk to doctors, you know, against the Department of Health. We always just have mm -hmm. these anecdotes against the Department of Health. And my boss told me that I was never allowed to pitch another story about vaccines um, because if I would even think these people should deserve a platform and should, you know, should be heard on our air, then I was just not trustworthy on that topic. And so it wasn't even like I wasn't going to cover it. I wasn't going to cover it. I was just pitching the idea that we should consider. And I, that was the first time wow. I ever had a manager tell me overtly censor, you know, you cannot discuss this topic and not even you can't report on it on our air you can't even pitch it. Like you can't even talk to your coworker who sits next to you about this topic. And I was like, what in the heck? Like I had never, I just gotten a few vaccines to go to Africa. I, you know, I didn't know any. So then of course I went to the conference because I was like, well, now I gotta, I gotta find out what's going on. And, you know and I mean? That honestly, I credit that in part with like where I am today, because if I, if I hadn't, if that hadn't happened to me, number one, I wouldn't have had that experience. Like, oh, wow. I didn't know that vaccines were something that you just can't talk about in corporate news. Um, and then also number two, I just didn't know there, there were doctors out there, like legitimate doctors with legitimate concerns. And, um, and so now, you know, <laughs> when the COVID debate came around, then I was like teed up for that. I was ready for that, but I think it would have taken me by much more surprise. So I'm curious what you, if you could talk about the name of the movie and, and how, you know, my experience yeah. relates to what you found too. Yeah. So in the movie, Dr. Ryan Cole actually says at the beginning, we do this anecdotal, the, the name, and he's just like, my, he says, you know, he's talking, you know, anecdotes is, is science, like science begins with anecdotes, like it starts with anecdotes. So anecdotes has become this bad word that means fake, but it actually just means personal experiences. And you start with personal experiences and then you go to the, and then the science has to be like, oh, let's study this. Let's see, is this a pattern? And then the science comes, but everything starts with an anecdote. So I've been called an anecdote though. When I talk about my vaccine injury, people are like, oh, it's just an anecdote. In fact, I even had somebody on Facebook um, when I posted about it, say you are, you should take down your posts because you will be responsible for killing people and getting people afraid to be vaccinated. So you need to take that down right now because your story is just anecdotal. And it was literally that moment that I was like, since when is it okay to not tell the truth? And that was when I, that was the name of the movie. It came from the guy in my comments saying, take down, you're killing people. You're just an anecdote. And then I added an S to the word. So I'm aware anecdotals is not a real word, but anecdotals is the name of the movie. Um, but yeah, because we're called, and it's just like, why is it a bad word? But actually when you talk to doctors, um, they say, actually, that's the beginning of science as an anecdote. So it's not a bad word. And then there's a phrase that we're all, we all say now, which is like the plural, you know, the plural of anecdotes is data. Mm -hmm. Well, and if you don't, the problem that we I think you've come across and that I've seen is that these anecdotes are in some cases, um, 
staying that way because in this case, nobody wants to do the research. So like you yeah. talk a lot about VARES and, um, you know, uh, in, in the documentary, people talk about VARES and how, you know, that system is, uh, you know, people say it's untrustworthy and, you know, it's the reporting could be anything. And, you know, the way I look at it is if, if they really wanted to, if they really if, if wanted to track these injuries, I mean, the government is very good at tracking lots of our lives. <laughs> so yes. they would have figured out VARES by now if they wanted to know. And so my only conclusion is that they don't want to know because VARES would look very differently if they did. That's just the way I look at it. Yeah, I think that's a great conclusion. I think it's great. And it's funny because, you know, well, so one of the stats that I say in my film is that VARES was developed, I forget the exact year now, like 1997 or something, like when it came into discovery, if you add up every vaccine reaction that has been had from every single vaccine until now, COVID, the COVID reactions are still more than all of them combined. And that tells you something, you know, it tells you it's, there's a, there's some signal that's higher than the rest. And as soon as we start using it to show, then like the government actually, like, I think Fauci has even come back and said, well, VAERS isn't, isn't, we don't know because people can lie and people can post their own stories. But what everybody knows about VAERS is that it's actually underreported. It's not overreported. And it says that on the CDC website, it says, and I have this in the movie. And by the way, on the references tab on the website, mm -hmm. I have a reference to every single study and every single news link. So like the Don Lemon you wanted to see, if you want to see that whole clip, you can find it. It's all in oh, order. Cool. And you can see, yeah, every clip, the view, every clip, every news clip, every study, everything with the CDC, you can find the CDC page there, click on it, where it says under reporting is the, is a main problem with bears. And it says it on the CDC website. Mm -hmm. But now that we have all these COVID reactions, they're saying, oh, well, people could lie. We don't know for sure. But yeah. Uh, okay. My next question before we continue on the other platforms, just so everybody knows, we're going to finish up the conversation on YouTube pretty soon and continue on Rumble and Rockfin. So check the links in the description and find us there. Um, this is anecdotalsmovie.com. That's where you can go see the movie in full. However, somehow it still exists on YouTube. So Jen's going to tell us how the <laughs> heck she did that because it was taken down at one point and it's still there now. Yeah. So walk us through yeah. what happened because I'm so this shocked. Is, it, yeah, me too. And I was so excited. I'm like, this is the biggest win. Like seriously, because everybody knows you, have, you cannot post anything about adverse reactions on YouTube. We've had it taken down. I post my story, they take it down. So um, we got it taken down. We uh, put it up and a day and a half later, YouTube took it down. I went through all the um, the follow-ups, like, please, you know, the, why tell me, they said it was medical misinformation. And I said, please tell me what's medical misinformation because I've spent three months with a lawyer to fact check this entire movie. I have the reference page on the website. Like they wouldn't yeah. answer. They just um, didn't care. It was a typical thing. So it was over. And then people started tweeting about it and hash and, and calling out YouTube with this movie. Like this is really, you're censoring this, you're censoring this. And then Senator Ron Johnson got involved and he tweeted about it. And he got 60,000 views on his tweet. And that afternoon, I got a letter from YouTube. And it said, we apologize. We made a mistake taking down your movie. It is back up now. And so <laughs> it's officially on YouTube. It's like the only vaccine injury thing that's been approved and is posted. And, you know, it's, it's really exciting because it just makes it more accessible to the mainstream, which is what we're trying to do, you know. Yeah, we hope that the, the more that for whatever reason, even if it was, because I honestly... I don't love that because I have been able to get some big YouTubers to retweet me. That's the only reason I get back in. Right? I don't like that because it, it, it still to me is like the little person, you know, the one who only has 10 mm -hmm. followers that it, it still feels like an oligarchy of sorts to me, you know, and I don't, I don't yeah. like that. Um, yeah. However, I hope that because I get back in and because I can keep pushing on some of these topics that someday the person with 10 subscribers won't, won't get booted and we won't yeah. have to wage these Twitter campaigns in order to have speech because it just seems like a terrible system that, you know, yeah. you just have enough followers that um, you can have the ability to speak, but somebody who doesn't have enough followers, which is, you know, that's like the whole point <laughs> is trying to hear what the people who don't, yeah. don't aren't, aren't part of the, the, the top of the pyramid, you know, don't, don't 
we were hearing people at the bottom, like the folks who, you know, nobody gets to hear about, like, that's the whole point of the internet in a lot of ways, right? Is that, we, that everybody can, can speak if, if they, if they want. And um, it's just become, it's just become, in my opinion, kind of a new reformatted corporate news outlet. I mean, YouTube even says, right, that they, they promote the corporate news. And if you look, if you search for uh, vaccine injuries, COVID vaccine injuries on YouTube, we were looking at it before we went live. It's all, for the most part, corporate news. Yeah. Um, it, it, corporate news outlets are all to talk about it or like really huge names like John Campbell. Um, and and yeah. I don't know if our video, like our talking right now is going to survive. We'll see. But I'll tweet Senator Ron Johnson if I don't. And <laughs> yeah, we'll he's, the, he's the champion. He's the champion. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know I'm already in their garbage dump of uh, shadow banning anyway. So, um, yeah. okay. So, Jen, tell people how they can uh, support you and then we'll continue on the other platforms. Uh, again, your website is anecdotalsmovie.com. Yep. Anecdotalsmovie.com. There's a lot of information there and the movie is there for free. So I put the movie for free, no ads. You know, we talked about, should we do ads? How do we get money? But this was not a movie. I knew I wouldn't make money off of it and I knew it had to be made. So we have it for free on the website. If you watch it and you feel like that was worthy of a movie ticket, like even just paying for a movie ticket would be great. There's a donate page where you can sell Venmo, PayPal, or mail a check. Um, so I'm just kind of hoping to recoup some of the expenses or more towards marketing based on people seeing it and wanting to help support it. Even if it's just the price of a movie ticket, it helps. Okay. And uh, don't forget also, if you want to support my work, everyone, and you want a great glass of Malbec to watch um, anecdotals, you can go to allisonwinepromo.com and get some high altitude Malbecs from Argentina. There's uh one from almost 9,000 feet, the one here in the middle. I tell people I ski at almost 4,000, 3,500 feet. So that's like way higher. What? More than twice, almost three times as high. Can you imagine being a grape at that altitude? You know, the wine's got to be good, or at least it's going to be unique. You might want to try and just see what you think. But anyway, they're all uh, from small operations. One, uh, this one here on the left, they hand harvest the grapes. It's an extremely limited production. Uh, it's one of my favorites, of course, because it's named the Rogue. I mean, you can't, you can't go wrong with a bottle of wine named Rogue, right? And then um, the Gaucho, which is um, uh, named after the Cowboys of Argentina. On the right, they are uh, wines that do uh, natural fermentation and zero filtration. So, so they're good wines. They're unique wines. You can't get them at a grocery store. If you're drinking wine already, like I said, go watch anecdotals and get some Allison wine promo in the meantime. Um, also you can do some USDA certified organic coffee roasts from Nicaragua. Also high altitude at twin engine coffee.com slash Allison. There's light roast. There's dark roast. Uh, there's also a tea. Um, this is what I drink in the morning, the black edition. It's really good. It's nice, smooth, dark roast. Um, but if you like tea, you can also grab the Katura tea. It's tea that is uh, made with a fruit around the coffee bean. It's very good. Um, tastes a lot like black tea. This is kind of what it looks like. I cold brew mine. So anyway, check them out and uh, check us out over on uh, Rockfin and Rumble. If you're watching on YouTube, we'll see you next time.